Hey guys, it's Yaron and in today's video I want to talk about how to effectively prepare for coding interviews and I want to give you some of my tips for using LeetCode more efficiently. I recently accepted an offer from Facebook so I'm super excited to tell you guys that I'll be joining Facebook as a senior software engineer this February. So I wanted to share with you guys how I prepared for the coding interviews part and give you some practical advice that you can use today. LeetCode is by far the most important tool you need to prepare for your coding interviews. It's mostly free, it's easy to use, and it provides more practice questions than you will ever need. But before I go on LeetCode, I make sure I know my basic data structures. Make sure you know how they work, which operations they can do, and the time complexity of those operations. If you're an experienced software engineer, you might be tempted to skip this part and go straight to practicing coding questions, but I really suggest you don't. As an engineer, you use these data structures all the time, but you don't really bother yourself with the lower level implementation details that you might get asked in an interview. Do yourself a favor, it won't take long, watch a 10 minute overview, make sure you didn't forget something basic that will cause you to lose time later on. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a 10 minute video that will summarize everything you need to know to get started. Next thing I do is go and lead code. And because there are so many questions, you need to have some kind of strategy that will help you decide which questions you wanna solve and in which order. You want your preparation process to be as effective as possible and in the shortest amount of time, so you have to give it structure. Now, the first thing to consider is the difficulty level. Each lead code question has a difficulty level that is either easy, medium, or hard. You start with the easy questions, and when you get comfortable enough, you move up to medium. And I suggest you spend the majority of your time on the medium level. I would sprinkle hard questions here and there when they seem popular enough, but I wouldn't spend too much time on them. And the reason I don't like spending too much time on lead code hard questions is that in my opinion, they're just less effective. And I'll explain. The key to this whole thing, the whole point of practicing coding questions is to learn methods and ideas that can be generalized and then used to solve unfamiliar and seemingly unrelated questions. Kind of like how AI works, right? You give your model a bunch of pictures of cats, eventually it will come up with a generalized idea of what a cat looks like, and it will be able to find cats in unfamiliar, seemingly unrelated pictures, right? So that's exactly what we want. And that needs to be your goal with every question you choose to solve. The goal is not to get that completed check mark, the goal is to learn something useful from it. Anyways, what I'm getting at is that a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the times, a lead code question is labeled hard because its solution uses some kind of trick or some kind of algorithm that is super specific to that specific question and you will not be able to use it for any other question. So unless you get that exact same question in your interview, which is unlikely, you basically learn nothing from it. So I'm not saying don't do any hard questions, but I am saying give them lower priority and focus more on medium. Second thing to consider is the topic. Do a few questions on each of the following topics. Arrays and strings, dynamic programming, trees and graphs, binary search, design, heaps, and recursion. There's really no magic number to how many questions you should do for each topic. There's also an overlap between these topics, but generally I like doing a couple for each and then focus more on the ones that are extra difficult for me. We sometimes have a tendency to avoid the topics that we struggle with, but you have to use your time wisely. Don't spend too long on topics that you're already good at. If you struggle with recursion, do more recursion. It might be painful at first, but trust me, at some point you will just get it, it will click for you, and it will feel so good not to be scared of it anymore. I would also devote a day or so to the less common topics, topics like backtracking, linked lists, union find, and tries. You're less likely to be asked those kind of questions in your interview, but you don't want to be caught completely off guard, so I would at least do one for each. Now, I want to mention a couple premium features that I like using, and three alternatives to those features if you're using the free version. First one is company tags. So if you're preparing for an interview with uh, Microsoft, for example, uh, you can select the Microsoft tag and it will show you the questions that users reported being asked at Microsoft. It will give you an idea of what to expect from that company specifically. The free alternative to this feature is to go on the discuss page and search the company name. So if I type in Microsoft here, I'll get a bunch of posts from users that write about their real interview experience. It's very useful. You can find a bunch of super helpful, good quality information for free. The second premium feature that I like using is the uh, sort by frequency. I can sort the questions according to the number of times they were asked in real interviews. Just a little side note here. 
Just because a question has been asked in many real interviews, I wouldn't expect to get that exact same one in my interview. Those chances are still pretty low. But what high frequency does mean is that it's just a good question. Now, if interview is found it to be a good measure of the applicant's skills, so the methods that you will use to solve this question are more likely to be useful in your real interview. A free alternative to that feature is the likes and dislikes count. I think it's a decent measure of the question's popularity and quality. If a question has significantly more dislikes than likes, I would probably stay away from it. Of course, these likes and dislikes are just opinions from users. Your interviewer might think this is a fabulous interview question, but still you have limited time, so you want to maximize your chances of picking good quality questions. I wouldn't gamble on the ones that so many users disliked. Okay, so now that we chose which questions we're going to solve, I want to talk a little about how to actually solve them. And I want to make this as general as possible, so this would apply to most coding questions. After you read the description and the examples and you fully understand what the question is, think of how you would solve it if you had all the time and space in the world. In other words, what is the naive solution? You don't have to fully implement this approach, just do a walkthrough in your head and make this your starting point. The naive solution can be very telling. For example, it can put things in perspective for you. If you can naively solve it in O of n squared, then the optimal solution will for sure have a complexity that is better than that, probably linear or n log n, right? So it gives you a clue to what the target performance is. It can also clue you into which type of optimization techniques you might need. What is causing the high complexity? Is it caused by an array search? Is it caused by duplicate computations? Whatever it is, once you've identified the cause, you can think of methods to optimize it. Often these causes will be familiar to you. You will recognize them from questions you've solved already. So the Brute Force solution can help you recognize these familiar bottlenecks that you already know how to optimize, and that will get you to the optimal solution faster. Next, you should solve it on a few small examples. Make the numbers small and the data structures tiny. For example, if your input is an array, keep the array size under five. Use these examples to try and find patterns, come up with generalized rules and test your ideas as they come to you. And if it feels that something about these examples kind of trivializes the question, then these are not good examples. You need to try and find examples that make things difficult. Think of inputs that your ideas might fail at. Think of corner cases and test on that. Now, if it's been half an hour or so and you still feel stuck, you still don't have a better than a solution, then stop. Don't spend too long on one question. It's fine, you will not be able to solve every question from start to finish completely on your own. Read the solution or watch a YouTube solution video and make sure you fully understand it. Don't just casually watch it and move on to something else. Try to implement it and submit it yourself. And this is super significant. When you write the code yourself and submit it, it helps solidify the uh, solution in your head and it helps you understand the details of it better. And once you are done with that, think what was the thing? What was the one thing that you missed that could have helped you solve this question yourself? And make a note of it, remember it. You'll be able to use it for other questions. This is how you learn from the questions that you couldn't solve. Next time you'll see a similar question, you'll know what to do. Lastly, I want to quickly remind you that every software developer has to do this thing every once in a while, and we all find it challenging. Seriously, I can't think of a single engineer that will say this process is easy. It takes time, so give it time. You will get to where you need to be soon enough. Okay, so that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you're going to use any of this advice. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.